Good morning, friends. Uh, it is Thursday morning here in Tempe, Arizona. Uh, I am Reverend Jody Topping, and I serve as pastor at Song of Life United Methodist Church in Queen Creek, and it is my pleasure and my privilege to do so. Uh, if you were watching my previous video blog, you probably know that I was sideways. So we're trying this again and seeing if this works. So uh, I am inside my home, as I mentioned. Uh, I decided to move inside rather than being outside because it is uh, much more um, uh, complicated, I think, for me to be outside. But I do have a little bit of the bougainvillea here in my frame, so you can enjoy that as you're listening to me. Uh, or some of the other you know, things that are in my house. At any rate, I do have a few things that I would like to share with you that are really important in the life of our church. First of all, I would like to share that, um, and many of you already know this, our friend Sam Bumgarner passed away uh, earlier this month. And um, of course, we were saddened by that, and uh, we, uh, but we also rejoice in the fact that he is now um, sitting at Jesus' side at the table of grace. We will be sharing a celebration of life for him. Uh, we'll be doing that at the end of March. So more details will be coming out about that. So watch for that information and um, you'll, it'll, I'm sure it will be a beautiful celebration of life. Let us continue to keep uh, his wife Anne and their children in prayer as um, they continue to navigate during this time of, of tremendous loss in their family. Secondly, I do want to share that I am really glad to report that our caseloads in the Queen Creek area are going down as they are you know, in much of the country. Um, it's, last Sunday I announced that uh, we are at the level, or at that time we were at the same level as we were at the beginning of um, January. So I am very hopeful that in the near future we can start resuming uh, full in-person worship again. And uh, of course we will continue to offer online worship and um, because we know we not only have folks who want to stay at home when the cases are up, when the virus is particularly contagious, but we also want to, and we also have worshipers that are strictly online worshipers, so we want to be able to continue to do that. Uh, but of course, that will be dependent upon a lot of things and something that I'm going to share with you in just a few moments. You probably have noticed that we haven't had a newsletter for several months. Uh, there's a reason for that, and I will share some of that in just a moment as well. But, but please know that you haven't missed anything uh, as far as uh, not receiving a newsletter. It just hasn't come out. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I'm doing these video blogs is to keep you informed as to what's going on at Song of Life and to also uh, invite you to continue to be uh, an active part of the church. So here is um, what I would really like to share with you today. And um, it's, it's a little hard for me to share this, but I think it's an important thing to share. Uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, you know that most of you know that David and I uh, began worshiping or were pretty much forced to uh, lead worship from our home. And when we did that, we didn't really need uh, or didn't really add very many additional voices to the worship service. Uh, not only were we keeping it shorter than usual, but we were also um, not able to really connect. We were kind of learning the technology at the time then we weren't really able to connect and, and be able to bring in additional voices. Well, then we, we were figured out a way to do that and we started doing that online. And then we, uh, when we resumed our in-person worship, we also had some um, complications with that as well. But we, we brought in more um, in-person volunteers as a necessity. We needed a lot of volunteers to be able to help out in various areas. Sadly, those number of volunteers have dwindled, uh, either because of people moving away or people choosing not to worship at Song of Life any longer or choosing to stay uh, strictly online worship. And, and so our number of uh, volunteers have dwindled. Um, we've needed more liturgists to volunteer to help with the, the actual leading of worship on Sunday mornings at all three of our worship services. Uh, at 8, 9.30, and at 11 o'clock. 
Um, and we've asked for those and um, unfortunately have not had anybody uh, new or have not had uh, very many people uh, new step up to, to the uh, challenge on that. Right now we are especially in need in worship uh, for volunteers in our audiovisual booth. We need people who can help out with uh, switching slides and also using the, um, the application that, that actually broadcasts out to our online worshipers. We need at least two people for the 9.30 and the 11 o'clock and one person for the 8 o'clock service. This coming Sunday, before yesterday, we had one person to, to cover all three of those services, and it was the same person, which meant that that one person would have had to do all three worship services, which is really not fair to them. I think all of you can agree on that. So I, uh, and this is not the only area, those are not the only two areas where we have a need. We have a need for people to uh, come and uh, sit in our office during the week when Robina can't be there. We need folks to help out on the grounds, uh, just to do simple tasks like checking out the light bulbs uh, on the string lights at the top of the church and seeing if we have any that are burnt out and, and then um, potentially replacing them. Uh, for us, uh, replacing light bulbs inside the classrooms and inside the buildings, um, uh, you know, just little things that, that need to happen around the grounds of our church. Um, I would also like to have someone who can help me with the newsletter. The, one of the reasons why we haven't been able to get the newsletter out is because I have been, um, um, my time has been uh, uh, used to do other things that needed to get done and um, for the church and consequently, the, the, there's only so many hours a day in a day, and, and even though I don't sleep much, I do still have to sleep. So, um, so you know, the, I would love to have somebody who could help me with that, help me do some writing, help me do some organizing of the newsletter, uh, so that this is not something that, that I'm doing on my own. Um, so we've got a number of areas that we need, that we need help with. Um, but particularly in our audiovisual area, because that is the one that is most um, critical. You know, I've always said for a long time that if we are, uh, if we can't get volunteers, uh, or if we're not able to identify volunteers to uh, help out with things, then we just don't do them. Um, and that's kind of what has happened with the newsletter. Um, but we can't say that with our online services. We must continue to offer online worship. And I think all of you can agree on that. I don't think any of you are, are going to disagree with me on that. But in order to do it and to do it well, we need helpers. We desperately need helpers. So I have asked the members of our leadership board to reach out personally to folks to ask them if they would be willing to serve. I am also putting out this plea to all of you, everyone who hears this, I'm asking you to either consider serving yourself, or if you know of someone who would like to serve or would be good at serving in these areas, reach out to them. Ask them if they would be willing to serve and have them contact me, or have them contact anyone from our leadership board. Have them contact Robina in the office. Any of us would be very happy to hear from them and prepare and provide them with additional information on what it is that we need and what it is that um, what our expectations are. You know, they say that many hands like make light work, and it's true. If we had more people, more volunteers in our booth, then the same people would not have to be doing it every single Sunday. And they would be able to enjoy some time with their family or go on a vacation or um, just do something different. Just sit in worship and, and actually worship. Concentrate on worshiping as opposed to worshiping while they're also doing the other. So this is a personal plea from me. But it also comes with a consequence. If we're not able to get enough volunteers to help out with worship, then we're going to have to make some changes, some difficult changes. What that means is that we're probably going to need to cut back on our worship services, potentially even cutting back to one service and having that be a blended service so that it will be both praise 
and traditional. Now, I know some people are not going to like that. And quite personally, I like offering separate services where we have, you know, one that is strictly traditional and one that is strictly a praise service. But unless we have the volunteers to make things happen, we just can't do that. We can't continue to do that. So um, this week we're fine. We did get an additional volunteer. And, and so I've got two volunteers that are doubling up on the, um, um, on the services um, and one that is uh, coming to just a single service. So we're, we're, we're okay for this Sunday but we're not okay for future Sundays. And so I've told my leadership board, our leadership board, that if we do not get some new volunteers to step up, then I will make the difficult decision to um, change our worship schedule temporarily to one service. And if we are not able to get volunteers even after that, we may have to make that change more permanent. I don't wanna do that. I don't think any of you want us to do that because those who attend the eight o'clock service, they attend the eight o'clock service for a reason. They like the intimate um, setting. They appreciate that we offer communion every single week. Um, it's a different feel than, it is, than the 930 service. And those folks who uh, attend that service, they really enjoy it, and they, they, they get the most out of their worship experience during that time. So I really don't want to eliminate it. Um, those of you who come to the 930 service, you also know that you have, um, you have a reason why you attend that service, whether it's in order to worship with your friends, um, or because you appreciate the traditional songs and hymns, or you appreciate the, tradi the more traditional structure um, and order of worship, um, whatever the reason, you enjoy that service. You get the most out of your worship experience in that service. And the same thing is true with our praise service. Even though it is uh, less attended than the others, um, it is, it is a, a very meaningful service for those people who attend it. They get more out of the praise songs than they do the traditional hymns just as those of you who attend the traditional service get more out of the traditional hymns than you do the praise music. So I know that each of you appreciates uh, the, each, each individual service and the, the characteristics for each individual service. But we just can't continue offering them unless we have help. So I hope that all of you who are watching this will prayerfully consider how you can help your church, how you can um, be an, a, a vital, vital member of the, um, of the teams that are assisting. And if you're already volunteering, thank you. Thank you so very much. And if you're willing to, if you're already volunteering on a particular team, maybe the usher team, and you're willing to learn something different, maybe uh, learn how to run the AV um, uh, processes, even better, thank you. We would love to have you do that. And we promise we will not overwork you as long as we have enough volunteers to, to do the work. And I use the word work only because I... You know, that's something that I've, I've done in the past and I probably shouldn't because it really is a privilege. It's a privilege to, to be a part of the, the teams that are, um, that, are, that are facilitating worship. And I know that's not a good word either, but it's the best that I can come up with on, uh, on short notice. Um, it is a privilege to lead worship, for me to lead worship every Sunday even three times on a Sunday, it is a privilege and I love it. And it exhausts me, but I, I, I get to take my afternoon nap on Sundays and, and usually by Monday or Tuesday, I'm, I'm fully recovered. For those who, um, who work in the booth, they are, because of them, 
those of you who are staying at home are able to uh, participate in worship as well. And so what they do is a real privilege. It is a, it is a blessing for all of you. Same thing with the liturgists. I'm sure over the last several weeks, you guys have gotten really tired of hearing my voice um, because I've been the only one speaking and that's been on purpose because I, I felt like if we had multiple people doing, uh, doing the, the speaking that that would increase the possibilities of, of um, transmitting this highly transmissible variant of the virus. Um, I'm gonna move away from that in the very near future. If not this week, then in the weeks, uh, uh, maybe next week or the week after. So, um, and those people who serve as liturgists, those people who, who are um, participating in worship in that way, they are a blessing. They are a blessing to, to you, they are a blessing to our guests. It is a wonderful thing, those of you who do volunteer. Same thing with, with uh, doing the grounds, doing work out on the grounds. When we have a church, uh, a church campus that is attractive, then more people will want to come. And so those of you who have the ability to, maybe you have a wonderful green thumb. If you have that ability, I know that Tanya would really appreciate your help on that. So please consider that. Please consider, uh, if you are a, are a good writer, please consider helping me with the newsletter. <laughs> I would love to have your help. Now, don't get me wrong. I love writing um, and I love uh, providing um, uh, something that is interesting for you to, to read. But I know you'll want to hear from other people too. You want to hear other voices as well, even in the written word. And so, um, yeah, if you have a, uh, if you're a good writer, let's connect, let's have coffee. Let's talk about ways that you might be able to help out with some of our written, um, communications to folks that are, um, um, that are part of this church. My friends, we have the best church in the neighborhood. We really do. Um, I know that we are friendly. I know that we are, um, you, got, you all do a great job of reaching out to your friends and inviting them to come and be a part of our worship. I love that. And, and we, we have a tremendous amount to offer to, um, to the community and now to the wider community through our online worship experiences. And so I, I hope that you will prayerfully consider the ways in which you are able to be a, a, an even bigger part of what is happening at Song of Life. Because, you know, if anything, our recent Transforming Our Soul campaign showed me that you all are invested in this church that you all are want to see things happen in this church, not just for you, but for the generations ahead. And so I know that that um, I know that you want to be a part of something big, and we have we all have an opportunity to do that. And so I, I end this with um, my plea as well as my prayer that all of you will consider the ways in which you, as, um, as the body of Christ, can, um, can be more actively uh, involved in the work of the church. I will end this with uh, something that one of my um, clergy colleagues shared with me as I was um, kind of talking through things with her. She's my spiritual advisor. One of the things that she said is that worship should not be considered a spectator sport. It's not like going to the movies where you walk in, you pay your, your price of admission, you sit down and expect to be entertained. Now, worship is a participation. It's like a participatory sport. Each of us, each of us has a role to play in, in worship and in the church and in the operations of the church, uh, in the education pieces of the church, in the fellowship portions of the church, each of us 
um, through our membership vows, those of you who are members, you will remember our membership vows say that we um, agree to, uh, or to uphold the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Friends, those are more than just words. And I think we all need to um, take them to heart. So thank you for listening to this. Thank you for paying attention to this. I know this is longer than I probably wanted it to be, but um, we had a lot to say. So uh, I look forward to seeing you in worship this Sunday. This Sunday, we're going to be talking about uh, our environment. We're going to be talking about creation as we continue our series called Facing Issues That Divide. So I hope that you will um, either tune in or come in for worship either at 8, 9, 30, or 11. Um, and uh, of course, I will uh, probably be announcing what the future worship schedule will be on Sunday morning. So you'll want to tune in for that as well. Friends, have a wonderful day. Um, have a blessed day. Um, and I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. God bless. Take care.